Amen. The word of the Lord. If you open up your Bible to the book of Galatians chapter 3, we will look at verse 13. Galatians 3, 13. As you know, I'm teaching on Faith for healing, but we really should just declare the covenant of healing or the covenant of health because that's what God has made with us as his children. And so uh, in Galatians 3.13, I will be reading from the New King James and whatever translation that you're reading from, I promise you it is a good one. All right, you have it? Galatians 3.14. And it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Through faith. All right. So that's why we talk about faith for healing or faith for health because all of the promises of God are received by our faith. It is the exercising of the believer's faith that give them access to the promises of God, which was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. The promises of God are not automatic, amen. They have been given and made available. We receive from God by the exercising of our faith as Christians, that's what make us unique and what make God so good is he didn't leave it to chance. The scripture said in Romans 12 and three, God have dealt to all of us or to every one of us a measure of faith. Every Christian, every believer has a measure of God's quality, God's kind of faith. However, that measure of faith you have must be exercised in order to develop it. What did I just say? In order to develop it. That's correct. And you exercise the, your faith by applying the scriptures to the promises of God. Amen. And as you begin to do that, you will begin to see that faith is more than just something we talk about. It is really a spiritual force, amen. And one of the most powerful spiritual force in the universe because it is the spiritual force of faith that connects the believer to the power, the presence, and the provision of Almighty God. And so we uh, see then the scriptures say we've been redeemed. How many of you believe you've been redeemed? The very fact that he said has redeemed us means he don't have to do it anymore. Now, you can be redeemed and not experience redemption. In other words, God can pay for it in full, but you're not doing your part. Therefore, it can appear as if it has not been made available because all the promises of God are received by how? By your faith. That's exactly right. Now, uh, we also um, want to bring to your attention the scripture that says in Psalms 107 and 20, one we quote quite often around here because the Holy Spirit certainly have rest on that word, that he sends his word, it heals us and deliver us from destruction. So two things we see the word can do. The word has the ability to heal, and the word has the power to deliver. And the Bible said, gave specific, it said, from, the, from their destruction, things that are, that are destroying a human being, the word of God can come and heal you of any sickness and disease and deliver you from any destructive yoke of Satan. That makes me excited. Then we read in Proverbs 4. Let's go over there. We'll read that, and then I'll move right on into victory land with you tonight as we talk about this other 
lesson relating to our faith and healing. You got Proverbs 4? Proverbs chapter 4, and we bring your attention to verse 20 of that particular book. Now, remember, we, we just read to you from Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let me just, for, for reference sake, talk about that curse of the law once again, because in order to know, you know, where you're going, you need to know where you're coming from. Is that right? The Bible tells us that the curse was threefold. When you study it from the five books of the Old Testament, the book of the law, it has to do with spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty. We have been redeemed from spiritual death. What is spiritual death? Spiritual death is being alienated and separated from the life of God. Spiritual death is not the same thing as physical death. The Bible talks about three different types of death, physical death, amen, spiritual death, and then eternal death. But here, the Bible wants us to know as, as the, 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 the covenant with Abraham that was cut through Christ Jesus, it redeemed us or placed us in a position where we are now connected to God, therefore we're alive unto God. We're not spiritually dead. So we're redeemed from spiritual death. Thank God for that tonight, huh? huh? That means, <laughs> the good news is, if and when we leave this physical body, if the Lord Jesus Christ tarry to be absent from this body, which is a tent, that's all it is. It just carried me around. What about yours? Huh? To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. When a believer leave out of this body, that's why we don't have the same view or attitude that people have about death that don't know Christ. Amen. Because we have a revelation that the grave is not the end. Talk to me tonight. Amen. So we're redeemed from spiritual death. Come on. Then we're redeemed from sickness and disease. All came in as a result of the broken law, the transgression of, of Adam and Eve against the laws of God. And then, of course, we're redeemed from poverty. Poverty in its origin is a devil. Amen. That's why <laughs> it can make a person live like a dog, a human. Poverty is a demon. Amen. And when you understand that from the Bible, you don't want any of it in your life. Right? So Proverbs 4, I just wanted to say that to you again. <laughs> Proverbs 4 and verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. I'm reading from the New King James. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why, Lord? For their life to the, them that find them. And what else? Health to what? All their flesh. So the word of God brings health to the flesh. Can you believe that? So that, can't you see why we should daily, daily feed on the scriptures? Because every time we do, we're taking God's medicine. Amen. Keep you well. Keep you strong. Keep you healthy. Amen. And it blesses you. So he said his word would be health. To all our flesh. Amen. Now, then if that be so, let me talk to you good tonight. If divine healing is for all Christians, I'm going to ask a question and then answer it. <laughs> if divine healing is for all Christians, why is there so much sickness among us? Hmm? That's a, good, that's a good question to ask, ain't it? And how I many of you know the Bible can give a good answer to any good question? Huh? The Bible gives the answer, and I believe we can start from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go there this evening. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. If, once again, if divine healing is for all Christians, that's why you, how I many of you know why people believe that God heals some and won't heal others. They believe that because of the way it appears in the church, right? But how I many know it's a lot of things that appear in the church to be one way, and God has a 
complete different thing to say about it. How many of you agree with that? Hmm? Even preachers will say one thing and God have another opinion. Especially when you're giving your own opinion. And how many of you know preachers are good at that? I'm one of us. I can talk about us. Huh? <laughs> 1 Corinthians 11, verse 29 of that particular book. You're going to learn something tonight with me. All right, then. Let's look at verse 29. I said once again, if divine healing's for all Christians, why are there so much sickness among us? Let's see what the scripture has to say. 1 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 29, it says, for, who eat, for, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Listen what it says. For this reason. For what? So how many know if he say for this reason, this must be the reason? Huh? Ain't got to do with people's opinion about it. God said, here's a reason why there's a lot of sickness among believers, though I heal all. You believe that? Huh? He said, for this reason, many are, are weak and sickly. You can't confuse that, can you? He tell you, he said, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, that word sleep, they ain't talking about going to bed at 9 o'clock. That word sleep means premature death. Amen. It's a judgment that has been incurred as a result of breaking this, this uh, or not, properly receiving this principle or this ordinance that God gave to the church. You can, so he's talking about communion. And here he's telling that Christians are weak, Christians are sickly, and Christians are dying prematurely because they are not discerning the Lord's body. And then he goes on to tell you one more so you don't miss the whole story here. He said, and, 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 and the, the problem is, he said, if you would judge yourself, you won't be judged with the world. So we got two problems that God give out scripturally. Why Christians are sick. Why Christians die early. And the devil ain't blaming, he ain't blaming the devil on either one of them. Isn't that amazing? Uh -huh. Most people blame God for it, but <laughs> some will say it's the devil. Right here, he ain't even saying it's the devil. He says something that a believer is doing. He said, number one, you're not discerning the Lord's body. And that's talking about taking communion uh, improper. So we see then that's more than just doing a, a traditional thing on Sunday then, isn't it? Or the first of the month. Because the Bible tells us, it has some serious implications around it. Hmm? It tells us, and then he said, and for this reason, that, that many die early because they didn't discern the Lord's body. He said, but if you judge yourself, you won't be judged with the world. So two things, the reason why. Number one, not discerning the Lord's body. Number two, not judging ourselves. When do we need to judge ourselves? We need to judge ourselves when we find ourselves violating the scripture and the Holy Spirit convict us, we should follow with correction. i say that again. When we find ourselves violating a scripture, how many know to walk out of love is to violate the scriptures? Huh? Or to become... Uh, uh, vindictive, where you're ready to pay somebody back. Huh? Now, they may need being, they may deserve being paid back. And if you ask me, I probably want to help you pay them back. But it does not justify us by, <laughs> it does not justify us to violate the scripture because the Lord tell, don't tell us, he tell us when they curse us to bless them. Pray for those who use you. Come on. You know you can't do that in yourself, can you? Huh? You using me, and I, I got to say a prayer that the Lord will bless you. Now, you know, you can't pray the Lord kill him because he don't have some kind of prayers. Huh? 
It was some guys asked Jesus to do that, and he wouldn't do it. Jesus, they ain't among us. Look, they casting out devil. You want us to call fire out on them? Jesus said, wait a minute here. You, I didn't come here to destroy man, but to save man. Uh, he came to seek and to save that which was what? Lost. Amen. So let me, let me work on you a little bit because I know it's the hard word to start off a Bible study with. But we want to know the truth, don't we? Because sickness is hard, ain't it? Disease is hard, ain't it? Taking medicine that, that have 20 side effects, yet for the help one little problem in you, and after it helped the wrong one problem, you got eight other problems from it. Lord have mercy, we better look to Jesus, better we? Huh? Give me some help here. Most medicines that you take now have some type of side effect. And the reason be because your body ain't designed for drugs. Talk to me. Now, you couldn't have told me that years ago before I'd met Jesus. <laughs> but our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God said, I'll live in you, I'll walk in you, I'll talk in you. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, glorify your body. Listen to what he says. Which is of God. God done laid. Do you know a lot of people get in trouble about this and don't know it? He laid claim on your body. He laid claim on my body. Talk to me. That make you quit singing that song, it's my thing, I do what I want to do. No, the Lord said, I claim this, it's mine now. And you can't do what you want to do no more. You used to, but you can't now. You can do it, but if you do it now, you will break a law and it will incur a penalty. Talk to me in here. Huh? You know, the things I'm teaching folks right now can save people's lives, especially in the church, if they get it for real. Huh? Because we got to be taught these things. See, people say, how can they be a Christian and they die? What happened to them? If you go behind the scenes. See, the Bible says wherever there's a curse, there's a cause behind it. The, the curse Proverbs say will not show up causeless. Anytime, how many you know? How many you know when you see flies in a house, that ain't normal? Something was open, wasn't it? Even if it wasn't but for a minute, and that fly get in there. Same way the curse is. Talk to me. Huh? Something got to open up for it to come in. I think if you get a little, little praise, we'll go a little further here tonight. Come on. Amen. Because he says this word and it heals us. And we're not going just for healing. Come on, how many of you are shooting for the stars with me? We ain't just going for healing. We're going for health. Well, we don't need healing anymore. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible tells me Christ have made that available. You know, I this is not being bashful about one God's best. It's available. We have a right to it. I'm not saying, well, how are you going to, you know, just like I heard this years ago. You know, you keep talking about the devil, he'll show up. If you don't talk about him, he'll show up. Give me some help in here. Huh? <laughs> and if you don't talk about him, he'll stay around too. All right then, so uh, what Paul Paul did not say that the saints of God uh, could expect sickness as a normal thing in life. He wasn't telling us that we're supposed to expect to get sick as a normal way of living. What Paul was saying, that there was reasons behind when Christians were getting sick and weak and dying premature. He said, number one, discerning the Lord's body. Number two, Judge not judging yourself. Now, isn't it amazing? The flip side of that coin is most Christians and most churches, some even have degrees in judging other people, don't they? Now, I know you won't say that in here, but <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, I mean, when it comes to judging somebody else, they can do it and do it and make an A on the report card. But when it comes to judging themselves, they're not too good at it. Huh? Uh, I, I, you know what? 
I done had a lot of people come tell me all kind of things before. But I don't have people come up telling me, you know, the Lord told me I was just a mess how I was behaving. They always say about who else, somebody else who was a mess. But the Lord talked both ways on it. He'll tell you about other folks, but he'll tell you about yourself too. Won't he do it? Huh? Yeah, he'll do it. And he, did, he does it so nice that it helped you change where you need to change. Is that right? All right, then. Let's see some things here. So now, of course, I, I'm going to talk to you about discerning the Lord's body because I think a lot of people don't really understand what that really means, discerning the Lord's body. But we want to move a little further into this healing principle here. And uh, we'll pick a service where we just uh, uh, lay down on that a little bit. But so you, did, you, did you write that down? Number one, discerning the Lord's body was a problem. Why people get sick. You see, you ain't got to guess. Why, why, why Christians get sick? This is what God say reason why it happened. Number two, number two, judging themselves. Uh-huh. Not judging themselves. And number three, I'm at the Lord didn't, um, I can say like Paul, I, uh, the Lord didn't say this, but I take it as permission to tell you, eating chillings to do it. Number three. Did you put that down? Number three, eating chillings. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk for a minute. The human body is subject to certain physical laws. Who would agree with Pastor on that? That the human body is subject to certain physical laws. Is that right? Then it is necessary then that Christians observe those same laws like anybody else. Huh? Because if if my physical body is subject to certain physical laws, then just because I'm a Christian don't mean I don't have the, the I don't, I, I get a special exemption that I don't have to observe that law. Talk to me now. Huh? All right. So then, after the Lord gave the covenant of healing in Exodus 15, let's look at that, Exodus 15. After he gave the covenant of healing in Exodus 15, 25 through 26, I know you can quote it now because we done read that so many times, but we're going to keep reading that because the Bible shows us that the covenant of the Old Testament was a shadow of good things to come. And tonight I'm here to tell you good things have come. They have come. Amen. All right. But let's go over there and look at that for a minute. Exodus 15, verse 25 through 26. Hallelujah. How I many you know why God's people are destroyed? For lack of knowledge. That's right. <laughs> so this, is, this then is informing us. Listen. And he cried unto the Lord. Who cried unto him? That was Moses. And the Lord showed him a tree which he had cast into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute. How I mean, you know he's telling you a statute and an ordinance that he made prove, or another word for prove is test. Amen. And he said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, would you agree that the law? A health would be included in that? Huh? If he said all his statutes, would you agree the law of health would be included in that? I would, huh? Because he said all, wouldn't he? If he said some of them, that may have excluded that one. But he said all his statutes. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, what? That heal it thee. That heal it thee. Now, then, immediately after the Lord gives them the covenant of healing, the very next thing he does, the very next thing he does in Exodus 16 is started to deal with their health or their diet. He switches from meat to manna, the very next chapter. He says, all right, I'm going to work on your health for a minute. Why? You eating too much red meat. Hmm? Talk to me. <laughs> T-bone steak. Lord have mercy. Who see it falling off the plate right now? <laughs> you know, these folks got in trouble because they kept saying, where's the beef? 
They got in trouble with God. He got mad at them about that. Matter of fact, they complained so bad that God just gave them so much meat till it started running out of them. I ain't going to go into that tonight, but he, he put it on them. Huh? Because they got them into glutton. Oh, Lord, help me here. They got over to glutton. And how many of you know, <laughs> see, y'all got to let me teach my lesson tonight. And so when he, when he goes over there, he switches their diet up and he gives them manna out of heaven. Manna was like a waffle type uh, 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 bread, but it was, the, the Bible says it was like honey was in it. Huh? And they ate that, and they ate that, and then they started saying, where is the meat? It was better. You brought us out here to die. It was better for us back there in Egypt when we sat down with the pot, bread with meat in the pot, and bread. Read Exodus 60. You'll see they said it just like that. They said it, it was much nicer. How was it much nicer when you was a slave? Huh? Now, listen, for a piece of bread, the Bible said a man will transgress. Did you hear me? <laughs> you don't hear me. For, can I say it better to you? For a piece of bread, uh, folks will hang you over it. Huh? And so they, they start complaining so to God. And so the Bible said God turned them over to do their own thing. So in other words, they had no buffer no more. They had no restraint on them. And they went for it. They ate that stuff till it started running out their nose. Sure did. Amen. And they got upset because God changed their diet. You say, why? Because when he said, I am the Lord, your healer, I'm going to take some things out of your life, and I'm going to give you some things in your life that will cause your life to be more fulfilled. Glory be to God. And I'm going to deliver you from the strongholds of what Pharaoh has physically done to you. Glory to God. Isn't God good? Huh? He said he's, so, he's such a bad man. He said none of those diseases that was on Egypt will be on you. For I am the Lord your healer. That was covenant made right there. That mean, that mean as they followed his prescription, the disease of the land had no place to come in. Glory to God. I'm talking good tonight. Now, go, look at, look at uh, Exodus 23, and we'll see this even more fuller. Look at Exodus 23. I love this, because this t cause what the Lord is doing, he helping us target right, on, right in on why, if the Lord heals, that healing is for all Christians, why, why then is there so much sickness among us as Christians? You got Exodus 23. Verse 25 says, so you shall serve the Lord your God. I need you to read that with me. Come on, read 25 and 26 with me. Ready, read. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you, and no one shall suffer miscarriage or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. What are you trying to say when he said, I fulfill your number of your days? He told them under the old covenant, how many of y'all know I'm staying up here for a reason, because I don't want to be preaching tonight. I want to talk to you. <laughs> so he told them, he said, he said, not only will I take sickness from your miss, but nobody will die in their youth. Nobody will die young. How I many of what the Bible called young? 70. You died 70, you was a teenager. Give me some help here. See, See, somebody thought that God said, because they read over there where Moses was quoting about three score and ten by reason of strength. They said, oh, God just wants you to live 80. No, no, no. When God talked to you about covenant life, he said, with long life, I satisfy you. I mean, with long life, ain't no 70 years old. Long life means until you get tired. 
a living out there. And then you say, I'm ready, Lord. He said, all right, you can come on out of here. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord some praise there. Amen. And you know ain't no vitamin you can take that can give you this, don't you? You got to get this from God. That's why Proverbs said, his word will be medicine to your flesh. So much medicine in the word of God that it'll break generational problems that's been running through people's family for years. God were to come in your life and cut you off from that tragedy, destruction. Huh? If there was all kind of habits and bondages that were running through a family line, the word of God coming in and it cuts you off from it. So you're not a victim of anything from your past. See, so we, we're not inheriting generational stuff. Amen. Like I said once before, I said it again, can I, eat, can I eat, a, eat an orange up here in front of you and you get full from it? <laughs> uh, no, the Lord is telling you, this is for you as individuals. Come on, let me move on here. Praise God. So he said, I will take, who believed the Bible tonight? This wasn't in the New Testament. This was the Old Testament. He said, I will take sickness away from the midst of you. He'll take it away. I mean, you know, your medicine cabinet will get clean. Nothing will be in there with a prescription in it. I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. Now, listen to me. You know, some people don't even, it's hard for people to believe this here. Because they're trying to say, if God healed, why so much sickness among the church? I just read it to you why. You just got to believe the Bible, that's all. And then you can't be talking about everybody. You can't. Your tongue will get you sick. <laughs> Your mouth will get you sick. Yes, it will. If you read on in Proverbs 4, where I stopped at at verse 21, read the rest of them scripture. Say, put away from you a forward mouth and a perverse lip. Put far from thee. What do you tell you? Put away from you a crooked mouth, a crooked talking mouth. Why? Because it affects your spirit. Hmm? That's the Bible. And you can't be going around holding stuff over people that they did to you 50 years ago. Huh? I remember hearing this story. I think it's rather right here. This, past, this minister, very well-known minister, had said this lady came in. She had been going from healing evangelist to healing evangelist. She finally, she said, I'm going to try this minister here because I've heard about it. If he pray for you, you'll get healed. So he said, one of the things he would always do, try to talk to people, you know, how can I help you, ma'am? How, how can I pray for you? And she said, before I, you pray for me, I need to tell you something. He said, he said, she started telling the story about how her sister had did her. You know, and, and how bad she treated her, and Jesus ain't, she just, we, I can't, I will never have a relationship with, with the way my sister treated me. And he said, well, uh, 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 how long ago was that that your sister did that? She said, oh, that was about like 40 years ago. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> he thought she was talking about something just happened last week, oh, about 40 years ago. But she's still going from healing preacher to healing preacher because she refused to let her sister go of something that she did to her 40 years ago. Can I tell you that's in the church right now? That same spirit that people just want to hold things over people and then turn around and say, now, Lord, heal me. He said, I can't do it. Why? You're breaking a law. Amen. All right, let me go on. I can tell you didn't like my story. I go on. <laughs> All right. So then, uh, that was a simple health diet, a manna that the Lord gave them to replace meat. And they weren't happy about it. They gave themselves over to gluttony. Look at Psalm 78, and you can see how they gave themselves over to gluttony. Psalm 78, verse 18. Psalm 78 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And it says, and they tested God in their heart. Now, this is New King James. I don't know how the King James says it. But it said they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Huh? What your translation says? All right. Now, then look at verse 27. It said, he also rained meat on them like the dust, feathered fowls like the sand of the sea, and he let them fall in the midst of their camp all around their dwellings so that they ate and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire, and they were not deprived of their craving. But while the food was in their mouth, what happened next? The wrath of God came against them and slew the stoutest of them and struck down the choice men of Israel. So, the, so where's the beast started the folks to die? Because they, 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 they lust and glutton so that the Lord just let them get so full, so full that they couldn't hardly breathe. Then he started striking them down. Hmm. And whoever ate the most got the first struck. That's what the Bible says. He, he slew the stoutest of them first. That means whoever ate the most got it first. <laughs> I'm being very political tonight. <laughs> All right, let me go. Let me go on him. So, as any physician will affirm, excessive weight predisposed to disease and early death. Huh? Is that right? Any physician will verify that. Is that right? That it, 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 that's just the cost of how. It's the way we've been built, the way God made us. Now let's look at another problem here that we done talked about. So we talked about number one, not discerning the Lord's body. Number two, not judging ourselves, right? Number three, breaking the law of health. Amen? Now, here we see something else. Here's another law that Christians break because why? Our physical bodies are subject to physical laws. Say that with me. Our physical bodies are subject to what? Physical. There are, meaning there are, there are laws that regulate the physical body. How many you know one of them? You can't go but so long without water. It's a law. Why? You are made to intake water. You can't go but so, you can go without some meat for a minute, but you can't go without water but for a minute. Talk to me. Huh? Be because that's the way God made us. Here's another one. You can't go without rest but so long. I said again. You can't go without rest but so long. I found it out that your body is so designed by God that if you won't give it a rest, it'll just make you rest. Huh? Don't care where you're at. It'll just collapse on you. So, all right, you won't lay me down, so I'm going to lay all of us down. <laughs> yes, sir. You got the rest. Now, here's the problem with resting and <laughs> understanding rest. You not only need physical rest. I mean, know if you're trying to physically rest and it seems and it seems like a skating ring going around the top of your head, you ain't resting really. So not only do you need physical rest, you need mental rest, don't you? Now you got to have those two, physical and mental rest. Matter of fact, the Lord set apart a day that He called the Sabbath, that even for Christians, we still should honor the Sabbath. Not as a religion but as a law that God said, this will keep health in your body. So you don't need healing. That's why the devil done tried to raise up whole organization to put people in bondage about it because he wants you to reject it. But at the same time, we are not tied to a day. We're tied to a living God who put in place a Sabbath day. The Bible said the Lord worked six days and on the seventh day he rested. Now, if God rested, how many of you know we better rest? If God rests after he got, <laughs> listen, he's trying to give you something. If he rests after he got to work, you better know you need it. Huh? It's got to shut down. But you got some folks, they're paper chasers. 
And like robots, they got to go get it. Talk to me. And, and see, here's the price people pay for that. They run and run and run after the thing and stuff. And at the same time, they hawk their health food. They get the stuff and thing, but they have bad health. Now, ain't no medicine going to heal you if God don't. You better quit fooling yourself. Listen to me. If medicine heal people, it'll be, it'll be a closed door. It'll be over with. You wouldn't need them in one batch. Why you got to keep getting a refill if it heal you? Give me some help. Huh? Give me another refill. Why? It makes you feel better. And it's supposed to guide you toward healing. But there's only one healer. And Jesus said, I am the Lord, your healer. Amen. And he tell you how he heals, don't he? He tell you how he heals. How do God heal? People want healing from the outside to the inside. He heal you from the inside to the outside. Because if your inside ain't right, your body ain't going to stay healthy. You know, <laughs> you know, one of the things that are, just as bad, matter of fact, and, and you, you study the strip, you see there in, in uh, Mark chapter 6, Jesus told those guys, said, come aside and let's, and let's rest for a while. After they had been doing ministry work, he told them, come and let's have some leisure. I looked it up, it said some fun time. Enjoy. Now you got some people in church think they're having fun is a sin. Let's have some fun time. Have fun What? You ain't spiritual no more because you want to have, you want to laugh while you go to heaven. You got to be mad to go to heaven. There's a bunch of religion in the church. Huh? Talk to me. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He gives you joy. How many of you know then worrying, anxiety, being anxious is anti of what God wants you to have going on on the inside of you. Matter of fact, he said, be anxious for nothing. Didn't he say so in Philippians 4 and 6? He said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall garrison or guard up your mind. Amen. So we need peace in our minds, not anxiety and worrying. And you can't do that for so long without it begin to affect your nervous system. More people, a lot of people don't know that. So you get, see, see, so when you start walking around like you don't have cares, their folks get mad at you because they won't see you worrying. But if you can't worry but so much without it having a negative effect on you. Huh? Because it'll affect your nerves. Medical science say this stuff will affect your nerve system. Start breaking you down on the inside. And I'm out of time. Did you get blessed this evening? Let's give Jesus some praise. Everybody.